All right, Ben, for the moment, thanks very much. Ben Wright. Uh, just a reminder, the Chancellor's speech is going to be at 11.20. It'll be covered on the BBC News Channel for you, of course. And uh, tomorrow, we've got the Prime Minister, David Cameron, from Manchester. He's going to be telling us how he plans to get the economy back on track. So thank you very much. The Greek Parliament has agreed more budget cuts as it tries to prove it has done enough to justify another bailout from its fellow Eurozone countries. 30 a man's been arrested in connection with a fire at a shop in the centre of Manchester during the riots this summer. The miss we'll go through the papers in just a sec, but first, Sir Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr and Yoko Ono have attended a premiere in London of a new film about George Harrison. Sir Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr shared memories of their friend and fellow Beatle. And just after 8 o'clock, we'll be joined by John Lennon's uh, eldest son, Julian, who's an accomplished musician in his own right. He'll be here around about uh, 8.40, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at uh, some of the papers. We're going to be with Carol with the weather forecast in just a few moments. But picking up with the Daily Telegraph, they have uh, a picture of Amanda Nguyen Pounds. When asked where it comes from, it's sort of down the back of the Whitehall sofa. <laughs> Our correspondent said a little earlier. Uh, let's have a look at the Daily and says the Daily Mail. French Mastiff who's enjoying the sun while it looks... Something the Conservatives said they were going to do before the election. So that's a brief look at the papers for you this morning. Time now is uh, 8.14. Coming up on the programme a little later. Frank? That's about right, Charlie. Yeah. Yes, it's been really hot for some of us this weekend. A good 10 degrees above average for the time of the year, but it is going to change this week. Not necessarily today. It will be cooler than it has been, but we're not looking at it. <laughs> uh, it's That's interesting, sweet, isn't it? We were just, you know, you showed that orange before. We were saying, is, is that practical for a child taking yeah. the little boy we saw there? Ready peeled. They were pre-sliced, weren't they? They were sort of already Absolutely. in quarters, which sort of makes sense. Yeah, Alison in Carlisle said, I was told by my children's infant school not to send oranges as it took too long to peel. As this is the only fruit she'll eat, I don't put any in now. When I was in the school and saw what the teachers had in their lunch bags, it was cakes and crisps and cream cakes. What an example, she says. Teachers need cake. Uh, my grandson says uh, one of our viewers has banned the whole school from bringing any healthy nut bars in. Because oh, yes. one of the options might be not because of yeah. uh, because there's one child who has a nut allergy means yeah, that well, no, one, no one can bring them in, which, no, which seems reasonable, but mm. it does deprive you of that. That Avenue. food stuff. Yeah. Um, Heidi, who says she's a normal mum from Devon. We do healthy pat lunches on a daily basis. We tried homemade vegetable soup in a flask, but the school said no, it was too dangerous. We oh, live for fear of scalding. Yeah, I suppose so. We live walking distance to school so often. We make fresh, healthy hot food and drop it in. Whilst warm, our son was told off by the dinner lady if you're having food that was too nice and making the other kids jealous. <laughs> Handing it through the bars. That's right. Have some of this. Uh, thank you very much for all your thoughts this morning on that. It's been good fun. Uh, it's going to talk about asparagus now. Uh, you may have got it from Peru in the past, from the United States and, of course, Spain. Uh, it's now available almost all year round. But the English variety, described by many chefs as the best in the world, is traditionally only available in spring. But a farmer in Herefordshire might have put an end to that. He's just begun harvesting the first ever crop of English autumn asparagus. Tim Muffet joined us from the asparagus farm to find out how he's done it. Morning, Tim. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Tim. I bet there's not many asparagus tips in lunch boxes. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, coming up, the video. Hello, this is Breakfast with Sean Williams and Charlie State. Welcome back to the programme. Our main story this morning, the Chancellor, George Osborne, says he will freeze council tax in England for a second successive year. He'll tell the... All that, a look at the sport. Chris is here. Morning. Yes, morning. Busy weekend of sport. Mm. We're looking nobbies yesterday. Fiery they were. I know. And good... Mary Porters, who's here. Morning, Mary. Morning. Nice good to morning. See you again. You too. So you go into a big retail store, mm. House of Fraser, and they say, right, we need you to turn over... How much a year? You're targeting, I mean, the ghastly phrase, mature women. I don't know That's why. That's you and I, Sean, I know, I know, I know. I just hate that phrase. You know what? You know yeah. what? In France, they call them mûr, <laughs> which mure. means ripe. Right. How sexy is cheese <laughs> okay. in the corner? So, so how do you dress a ripe woman? Well, face attitude. <laughs> Let's have another look at a clip from the programme. <laughs> to rent this space on Oxford Street. Mary, Queen of Frocks, starts on Channel 4 tomorrow at 9. Uh, we've had a few wonderful days, haven't we? Too oh, warm gorgeous. for some people, though. Yeah, a little bit, but it's going to get cooler. Here's Carol Morning talking about photography as well. Yes. Is there, is there a, do you want to sort of fall into music and embrace it, or is there a bit of... Thank you so much for coming to see us this morning. My, my pleasure. My nice pleasure. to see Thank you. Thank you. The album's called Everything Changes, and it's out now. BBC's latest conspiracy thriller is set against the backdrop of riots and economic turmoil. It stars Ashes to Ashes and Life on Mars actor Philip Glenister. I'll speak to Philip in just a moment about Hidden. First, though, here's a last quick look at what's happening wherever you are.
dun, dun, dun. Ooh, welcome, uh. ooh, uh. welcome to the programme. Thank you for uh, having me. So that's you. Gina Hawkes, yes. the character, um, who says she's a solicitor, but you're not quite sure whether she is. Mm. You don't really know what your story is either. It's quite a sort of murky, complex drama, isn't it? That's really, you're just thinking... Oh, yeah, you want, yeah. definitely. So it was always a, so as soon as I'd finished reading the first ep, I was on the phone to my agent saying, are they finished ep two? I but to, you didn't, I so you it. didn't know what had happened, what happened oh, to no. your character, Harry, then, no. at all? No, I quite, I quite like not knowing. Busy man. Thank you very yeah. much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Good to see you, Thank you very much. Uh, and you can Good see drama. Philip in the new drama Hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, starting this Thursday, 9 o'clock on BBC One. That's it from us today. We're back tomorrow from 6 o'clock. Bill's in Manchester. He's going to be interviewing David Cameron at the Conservative Party conference there. And Sean here on the sofa. Stars of the Three Musketeers, I'm yes. told, coming in. D'Artagnan. A new version of the movie in 3D coming out soon. So hope you can join us. Lady Antebellum with us as well. Bye bye.